What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Now, today I think I had to drop this information real quickly. It's about the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. It's recently been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize Award, which, you know, personally on this video, I'm just going to be ranting a little bit. So please excuse me. But personally, I think it's an insult to the previous people who have actually won this award. We all know what Black Lives Matter stands for. We all know what Black Lives Matter has done. We all know that Black Lives Matter hasn't helped any black life at all. Matter of fact, they've actually led to the deaths of more people than black life. We know they are very divisive and we know all their strategies. They want people to consistently think, especially black people, to think that they are victims. And they want white people to think that they are guilty of being of being born racist. Um, this is what Black Lives Matter stands for. This is what Black Lives Matter is pushing. But they want us to think that Black Lives Matter is equated to the same type of movement that Mahatma Gandhi had in 19. 34 um, against racial injustice right uh, in South Africa and what have you they want us to think that it's the same civil rights movement that Martin Luther King uh, pushed for uh, in the 1960s that he won a Nobel Peace Prize for in the 1960s they also want us to think that it was the fight against apartheid that Mandela won a Nobel Peace Prize for but this is Black Lives Matter they don't have any representative they don't have one single person who is standing for Black Lives Matter who can give you guidance and direction as to where they go because Black Lives Matter doesn't have any direction whatsoever. You get certain groups of Black Lives Matter people, blacks and whites amongst them, unlike what people would like to make you believe that it's only black people that are protesting. No, they are majorly white people that are protesting, right, because they feel this white guilt in them. Chanting racist chants at police officers, telling them they are like, what, um... They're like uh, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon and what have you. Um, chanting racist chants at black police officers saying they've got the biggest nose that they've ever seen and also tell, calling them what? Pet and word, right? We know what they stand for. We know that Black Lives Matter, of all the achievements that they can boast of, they have never helped black people. They've raised over $10 billion and... Out of that $10 billion, everything they said in their mission statement, they've done absolutely nothing to promote black culture, to, to, to help black people, right? You want to push this idea that black people are oppressed. That's what they want to keep pushing, telling people that black people are oppressed. They want to keep telling black people that they're victims. And when you call people a victim, the definition of victim or a person who is a victim is somebody who has been hurt, who has been... Uh, demoralized somebody whose power has been taken away from them and the more people feel like this the more black people feel that they have had their power stripped away from them the more they feel the need to actually want things without actually working for them because they believe that they are victims of circumstances that they are victims of what white people have done to them in the past meanwhile in today's world right you're not a victim black people aren't a victim but this is the message that they are trying to push. Now, the things that Black Lives Matter boasts of is that they have had the increase in support for Black Lives Matter, right? They say 20 million people have participated in the Black Lives Matter movement, in the protest or what have you. Fair call to them, 20 million people have. But records show recently that out of the 65% uh, percent of people that actually said they had somewhat, um, let me say, support for Black Lives Matter, it's dropped down to 55%. Out of 69%, sorry, it's dropped down to 55%. And those people who have vehement support, like they're seriously in support of Black Lives Matter, is about 39% in July. As at September last year, it had dropped down seriously to about 28%. And it's further going down, right? So when they're talking about increase in support, there has been a huge decrease in support for the Black Lives Matter movement because really it's not helping any black life. I've asked this on this channel before. If you know any black family, including George Floyd's family, that the Black Lives Matter movement has actually supported or helped, you let me know in that comment section below. But who has benefited from all the $10 billion that they have raised? Well, they use the same platform that Democrats use in raising funds. And I don't want to speculate here, but you're using that same, same, uh, act blue um, what do you call it uh, act blue platform and we're not seeing the money go anywhere even some black Lives matter factions in some states have complained that they haven't received any money from the key organizers of the black Lives matter so 
it's amazing that these people are being nominated for Nobel Peace Prize Award when most of their protest has not been peaceful. They say it's mostly peaceful, but this is supposed to be Nobel Peace Prize. If there's something that is uh, synonymous to both Mahatma Gandhi, um, Martin Luther King and Mandela, is that they carried out peaceful protesting and they had people to actually take responsibility if there was anything bad happening right they had a forefront runner each one of them so if something bad was happening you could blame Mahatma Gandhi if something bad was happening during the civil rights movement if there was any violence right being carried out by the people that were marching with Martin Luther King I'm not talking about the Black Panther people I'm talking about the people that were marching with Martin Luther King then Martin Luther King would have been held responsible but they found no fault in his protest because they were peaceful right the same thing with Malcolm X they were peaceful protesting they weren't destroying any properties any lives people weren't dying unlike this Black Lives Matter movement where 25 people died from as a result of these riots and protests and they said no 93 percent like seriously Black Lives Matter they were saying 93 percent of the protest has been peaceful and 7 percent has been violent Try holding police accountable for the same standards, right? Imagine if police in America, they have 3 million interactions every single day. This is on record. If 7% of those interactions were violent, if 7% were violent, do you know how many people will be either injured or, or killed or something? 210,000 people will be dying every day or being hurt every day, right? If police interactions were 7% violent. So put that into context. So seriously, why do we think that they are making a lot of noise about Black Lives Matter right now? It's because the movement is dying and they need a way to reaffirm that movement. Do you want to know why? Because they, they want to reassure those people who think that they are victims that they have every right to do whatever it is they are doing. I remember Alexander Ocasio-Cortez defending looters, saying that, well, they have to do it. If you have to choose between one thing or the other, if you have to choose between dying at night and robbing for bread, well, what do you do? These are leaders who could be actually putting policies in place that would help people. I'm not just talking about black people alone. I'm talking about people in general because there are poor people across all races, whether you're talking about white people, black people, every Asian people, or what have you. We have poor people in all races. And also, this thing they are complaining about, police brutality, it doesn't just affect black people. That's another lie. It affects white people. It affects Hispanic people. And I showed you guys a particular data showing you how, as of 2019, the proportion of um, Hispanics that were ending up in po police brutality is higher than the proportion of black people. A lot of people tell me this is a lie. I didn't pull up this, uh, create this uh, statistics myself. I found it from John Hopkins University, right? I put the statistics up and I showed people. And every time I show some of my friends, they keep wondering. These are all the lies that they're pushing. And the person that actually nominated these Black Lives Matter people, his name is Hyde. He's a Norwegian MP from a left-wing party. And right now, they are making a mess and a mockery of the Nobel Peace Prize. They are disrespecting the memory of the past people who have actually made a difference in the world. Black Lives Matter hasn't made any difference in the world. Let's be real about that. They haven't made any difference. Matter of fact, they have been more divisive than anything. They have been trying to separate black people from white people because the more we mix, the more we realize that we are no longer in the era of Jim Crow. We are no longer slaves of the plantation. We are no longer lower in class or social status than anybody or white people or anybody, right? They want us to keep thinking that way. And they know that that hold and that grip is dying right now. So they're doing everything possible to kind of like rekindle that because if they have control of your mind, if you have a victimhood mentality, you will be whipped back and returned back to the slave mentality plantation. Because a lot of people, unlike what people think, that all black people wanted to be freed from slavery, many of them stood by. Many of them stood back, right, back then because mentally they were demoralized mentally they made them feel like they needed their masters and they would do anything to stick with their masters and right now it's a mental war they know we are starting to wake up they know that black people are starting to realize all the lies they know black life matter doesn't care about you just imagine the disgrace they did in celebrating martin luther king's day by twerking in front of the lincoln memorial that was an insult to black people 
And do you know what they said on their Instagram page? They said this was a dance of freedom. Oh, so all of a sudden, presidency changes and you're free. So Biden is the guy who actually sets black people free, right? That's why you were celebrating freedom. Not only that, they were saying that they are celebrating the desexualization of black women by actually sexualizing a black woman, dancing and twerking. And they call that an African tradition, twerking. Twerking was popularized by Miley Cyrus. It was put on the, um, what do you call it? It was put in the dictionary after Miley Cyrus performed it in 2013. They're lying to us, people. They don't care about black people. And if you keep falling for it, you will remain a victim and you will remain at the lower status in the, you will remain low in social status and financial status. And what they are using, they're using prominent black people to also push this message. You get people like Oprah Winfrey talking about white privilege. You get people like um, LeBron James talking about we're being hunted. It's a lie. It's a lie. What's happening to black people is happening to white people. And we need to realize this, this hold, it's time to break it. It's time to break that yoke. It's time for us to stop believing that all white people are racist, that all black people are victim. That's a critical race theory ideology. And that's what Biden has signed back in, something that Trump kicked out. Because this doesn't unite people, it is divisive. It divides us from each other. I just wanted to rant a little bit about this, to be honest with you, because we really need to hear this message. White people need to stop feeling guilty about something they didn't do. Their forefathers did it. Black people stop, need to stop feeling that we're victims because our forefathers were victims. We are not victims. The moment you keep thinking this, I repeat, the moment you start to fail. Think about it. Most of these top people that are complaining about these things, most of these Cardi B's, most of these people talking about systemic racism, Kamala Harris, these people of color that are talking about systemic racism as what is hindering black people. You got to ask yourself this question. Why didn't it hinder them, the systemic racism, from becoming rich? Why didn't it hinder them from becoming successful? LeBron James is from humble beginnings. It's from humble beginnings. Cardi B is from humble beginnings. Beyonce, Jay-Z, they are from humble beginnings. Systemic racism didn't hold them. It can't hold you.